For those of you who have patiently waited, here it is, step two, or stage two, or however you want to call it, for modifying and making a working Pip-Boy. In this stage, we're going to be teaching you how to disassemble the Pip-Boy, whichever version you have, as well as the holotape and the radio. Better stay tuned. This is your Geek Fix. So for all you patient viewers out there uh, who have been asking me, well, when's the next step coming out? Uh, the answer is, I, I d initially, I had planned, uh, especially since I'm kind of limited on my time, to be releasing these kind of back to back. The problem was when I planned these out, I planned them in an order that I thought made sense in my brain, but it's been a while. It's been a while since I've done this process and there were some things that I kind of forgot uh, that I would have to do. So initially, my plan was to show you how to disassemble it, then how to paint it, then how to modify it, so on. But what I forgot was that before I can paint it, um, I'm gonna have to actually modify a portion of the shell. And it has to be done before you paint it because if you are planning on doing the Blackberry version of this, you will need to modify a little bit that shell in order to be able to fit it in there. And uh, the way that I do that using a heat gun is a little dangerous to do and, and will actually also ruin my paint job if I paint it before I do that. So that means I'll have to do the Blackberry piece first. And then there's just a couple other things that I decided, well, I'll have to do them inside of a certain order. So even though this is supposedly in stages and steps, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is the order to do it in. It just depends on what you're planning on doing. I'll also say that I'm trying to get this done before November uh, because I have to mail this in advance before the November 11th event. But um, I can't guarantee they're gonna have everything done or show you everything you need to know before Halloween. If you're planning on doing this for Halloween, I'd also recommend watching the other videos. There's a lot that I give in there. Uh, the purpose of these is just to show more stage to stage what I did. And, and I do wanna be specific. There are some things where I'm gonna show you exactly what to do and I'm gonna say, yeah, sure, do this. On the other hand, uh, some of the electronic stuff that I'm gonna do, I'm still gonna say, for reliability purposes at the very least, uh, I don't recommend doing this, but if you're determined, um, you know, the purpose of this is I'm, I'm gonna at least educationally show you how I did it, uh, so you can kind of develop your own way. We'll just say it that way. Two more things I'm gonna tell you is that, uh, this is also going to depend on the version of Pip-Boy that you have. So, of course, my original Pip-Boy did not have the working screen and uh, these tubes over here. Um, that is something that is specific to this model. And that means, too, that this is wired and put together slightly different. So I'm going to show you some keys for taking it apart generally, but I'm also going to tell you some things that are going to be important and will hopefully be able to discover some things that will be important if you're trying to maintain uh, this working screen and uh, tubes. Another thing is, I want to do this in the order uh, at the, literally you did with the kit. So with the kit, you'll remember that this holotape was actually one of the first things that, that we uh, put together. So for that reason, I'm also going to start off by taking this apart, which is, of course, the simplest thing to t put together and to take apart. Why am I taking it apart? Um, well, if you want, uh, one of the things I am going to show you how to do is how I made that working holotape, uh, literally. When I say working holotape, what I mean is that this will be a self-powered Wi-Fi hub uh, with information on it. In other words, an actual router. This will be a mini self-powered router uh, that will allow you and two other devices to be able to connect to it and to access and put photos or video or, or other files on it. Um, and, and it was actually the thing in the end, I think this was the thing that I was actually most proud of uh, because it was so simple, so cheap to do. And uh, really exciting because if you're aware of how big this is, um, it's, it's very, very thin on the inside. I mean like credit card size uh, to be able to fit all those different pieces. So we will need to take it apart. If you want to use this one, I also have a shell that is printable that you can use um, and uh, that get, has a little bit more space in it. So it might be a little bit easier uh, than trying to modify this for that same purpose. 
Now, I will tell you, if you're still trying to get a hold of one, online, these things are going, everything I'm gonna show you today, True, they are going for like 120 bucks, $300 even. I've seen hollow tapes for it, which were I think $10 initially. I can't remember, $10, $15. Um, and so they, they came with the two screwdrivers. This is one that I bought on eBay recently. Was over listed. And the, chem, the thing that I'm gonna tell you is, at least for me, at least at the time of this video, uh, when I go on eBay and you see all these incredibly priced, like as in overpriced, uh, items that are Fallout related, um, at the same time, when I offer, because most of them do have, make an offer, and when I offer uh, to pay what I think is realistic, um, in every case, I've been able to get it for that price. For this one, I got this for 20 bucks, $20 for that. Uh, which is reasonable, more than reasonable, right? For for the cost of that holo tape. Um, let's see if it has everything in it that it originally came with. It sure looks like it. So it always came in the box, came with two screwdrivers, um, the the original size holo tape screwdrivers. It also comes with this screw in it, which is funny uh, because this one right here that I have is already assembled. Um, so <laughs> whatever. And then, I will also say this, it always came with this card. There we go, and uh, darn. I got, you know, they were always random cards. This one says, I failed to get a game card image, which is sad. A lot of them came with actual game images, um, so it looked like the different exteriors to holotapes um, or from the magazines. So as you can see that that one has the automatron. Uh, and then also had the directions for putting together a hollow tape on the inside. Now I, I'll show you this. Uh, we already talked last time about the screwdrivers. Um, these are the ones that they accidentally got um, that were too small for assembling things. Um, it was fine for putting together these hollow tapes, but at the same time, then this came with uh, the both the stand and with this new Pip Boy. Uh, and originally I thought, because when I pulled on it, I, I couldn't pull it out, but uh, people insisted that theirs did, and uh, and sure enough, I actually had to get pliers out to pull it out, which I like the fact that it was that stuck, because my other one, it slides in and out a little bit too easily, so if, I, if, I'm, if I'm not careful, it will slide out, and then I can lose that, uh, the shaft of it. But at the same time, this one holds it perfectly, um, nice and tight, and so I don't have to worry about it falling out. So, anyway, this is uh, this is the screwdriver I'm going to use for doing everything today. And uh, as you can see, we have two Phillips head uh, screws here, and then we have this little slider right here. The slider is the first thing I'm going to try and remove. Actually, uh, in this case, I can flip my screwdriver around for a second. I'm going to use the flat head, and I'm just going to pop it underneath there for a second, and just like that, it pops right off. And so that's one piece that I'm gonna put over here. And then I'm gonna flip this back around and uh, I'm gonna take out these two screws right here. And boom. Now I can just take this apart just like this. And then you have this piece right here. And I do wanna show you. So the problem with when I did that other part um, there it goes. Is that I needed this to be fully open, so I had to dremel all this out, and then we need this flat, which you'd think that might start cutting into these, but these actually, this is such thick plastic that if I flatten this out, it doesn't affect this side at all. But uh, at any rate, so that is something that I want to do. As far as storage of some of these things and keeping the all organized. And this is where I tend to utilize transparent containment pouches, better known as sandwich baggies. Yes, that's right. They are all zipper pouches uh, like this. And uh, some are these 5.1 inch bags. Uh, other ones that I have are the half gallon bags like this. And then others are the full gallon bags like this for our big parts. So for the purpose of our hollow tape here, I think I'm gonna just use one half gallon baggie. That is my first step. And yeah, there's a little bit of air in there. That's what I want, that's okay. Now we're to the actual 
Pimp Boy itself. Um, now the first thing that we're going to start with is these caps right here. Uh, on my version, they're plastic. I know on the other versions, uh, you'll have either metal caps that look similar to this, or they're just bolts. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing uh, is in here, and that's just because it'll help me to pull things apart. Now, depending, you might have tried gluing yours in my uh, cord right here, which is the antenna on the actual radio version, um, is just stuck inside. Um, there is a little, a little tube that's inside of here that it sticks into. Um, I'm gonna detach that now. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unvelcro this padding here and let it come apart just like that. And now, where we're gonna get into some problems it has to do with these wires right here. Because uh, I don't know. I just, I really, I don't know how uh, they, they're connected all the way up to here. If I can disconnect something so that uh, we can maintain uh, all the electronics and keep them working. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now pull from this side, I'm gonna pull these out. So we're gonna start with this one right here. I'm gonna undo this side, just like that. And so I'm gonna now use this side right here to pull this out. Just like this, there it goes, all the way out. That is the main rod that connects these two sections uh, for the most part. Um, I'm gonna get more into this here in a second, but I'm gonna take this part off. Get in there, okay. So I'm using a flat head really carefully here so we don't scratch anything. We have to take off this face first because it has some notches that stick out and then I can just use my razor blade and I'm gonna just lightly lift that, there we go. And there. So you can see right here. So there's these two parts and those stuck into here. Uh, this one right here is what locks on that end piece. And so I can't pull it off until I pull that out. I'm gonna keep all my radio pieces here. Um, this is something that's cool that I don't think a lot of people noticed. So this is the non-actual radio version. And, and where Chris did something I, I really like a lot, or the one company did, is that it's not just something that's supposed to look like the front of a radio. The part that you don't even get to see right here looks like an actual speaker. It actually has this Robco even, something that most people probably never even check to look at, would never get a chance to see unless you did the model version. Um, it, it looks pretty, it looks pretty great. So at any rate, that's something that I think great attention to detail on the part of the wand company. Um, with this section, once when we uh, have done that, we need to still take off one more screw it's up here. Again, I wanna be careful. Oh yeah. I think I showed this in the last video. Again, there's those working parts. Um, I have a plan for making this a working uh, I'm trying to remember if we're going with AM or FM. I think we're going with FM, even though in some parts of the country, uh, for, for less powerful radios, AM is, is kind of the way to go. Uh, but we're gonna make an FM radio that actually works using this, um, even though I did go ahead and get, and I'm gonna show you how I got this, uh, a working Pip-Boy version. Um, just for those of you that might not be able to get that. So we will get to that, but that might be the last module I do um, because it's the one part I haven't uh, previously done. And I need to create some things by a 3D model on the inside to make this work. So I'm gonna now be pulling this part off. Now what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna take this little part right here and I'm gonna be screwing it this direction, unscrewing it from the other side. So you can see in here, you see it, that's, that part unscrewing from in there? So all the way back there, continuing to turn it like this, and then I'm able to pull it all the way on out, just like that. If you have the original version of this, at this point in time, everything should pull apart. This is not the original version. This part's put together a little bit differently. There's one more screw that's in here. Uh, it's right here, as you can see. I'm gonna unscrew that. 
Aside from these screwdrivers, right, there are also tools like this right here for being able to, which I never had to use <laughs> for tightening some of the bolts and things. But this right here is what we are supposed to use for popping off those knobs. And a lot of people didn't even know what the tool was for because they didn't have to use it once when they put the pit boy together. Um, and so it clips apart and it represents the two different sets of buttons. So same thing here, I should be able to slide this into where my button is. I hold it tight and as I hold it tight, I turn this knob and what it does is it will, whoop, it will pop that button loose um and by the way there we go so from the inside it'd be easy to unclip that but from the outside i have to uh, use this tool so what if i can't use that tool well i don't know about you but i uh, i keep a lot of cards like this, this is a t-mobile card which i never use their service so but i do have this card and uh it, it's just the right thickness of plastic that i need a lot of credit cards and things would be um, and what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to create a hole that is exactly one half of an inch. Anything too special, nothing too exact. Uh, just kind of cut that out like that. And so this is one half and then it kind of tapers down however you want it to taper down. And then turning this handle until, yep, until it pops off like, well, the whole thing came off that time, uh, just like that. And then I can pop it through this portion afterwards so that's the way you can handle it if you need to next I'm still gonna need to unscrew this portion right here and these are long screws and then all right now when we look inside we can see actually where it's being held together over there now it's not um, and this is now coming apart uh, ooh I didn't want that to necessarily come out but it's not a big deal that they did uh, this is another part where I don't know which wires are actually uh, connected down here and which ones aren't. But we can take off these three pieces right here. All right. And then there's nothing holding on this plate anymore up here. Although, if you look on the inside here, you'll see there is a little clip. I just push on that clip, pop it through, and now take that base plate off. Uh, this is a sticker that's actually on this piece. Um, that's great. It'll help us guide some things. I have a replacement sticker that you're gonna be able to print out that uh, does not have a needle on it, so you can put the real working needle inside. But we wanna keep this. Don't cut that out. Don't cut it out. <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about these buttons just yet. I'm gonna leave those buttons attached for the moment. Um, but I am gonna be unscrewing these screws over here. It seems like you'd wanna unscrew from this side on mine, on this current version. Uh, but actually, in this case, I'm gonna be doing it from inside the cuff. So inside the cuff here, you're gonna see, there they are, these screws. I'm gonna undo those. And uh, you will find that that will make it easier to remove this. And now that I got those out, I'm gonna put the other ends over here. Another thing you could do is temporarily, just for keeping track of things, you could screw these back on to here. So this is what you saw on the outside. It really just clips. And so I'm gonna stick that through and connect those clips back up. And you're gonna see the same thing on the bottom. Also easiest to take off using the cuff. So I'm coming in from the back side and unscrewing those just like this. Now that I've got that part, I'm gonna unscrew these screws that are on the bottom. Um, and then, same thing down here. Detaching these two screws. This piece is exposed because I've taken off these two ends. I can actually just push it through, just like that. Pull it through just like this. And this is my big key component that I was wondering about. So the upside is, nope, I don't have to cut or desolder this. I'm gonna now just be able to pull this pin. If, if your plan is to keep, keep that module working. So we got this piece right here. 
Um, and there's my two working tubes. Um, but for me to use my other radio module, I'm gonna take that screen off here too. Um, I'm gonna need to take this part off. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it off of here and keep that screw with it so that uh, you know where it is. So there's all that was inside there. So those two little lights. And, uh, and then there's our two tubes that are left over. And now I have done a different paint uh, job on this back part before, which on the full model, uh, this piece right here, which slides out, um, it was all one black piece before. This one, has kind of a silver piece that's behind it. And I, I liked making this all silver on the other one because it reflected those glowing candles a little bit better. But I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that this time. But if you wanted to, you can pull this out and you can paint it right at the moment. I think I'm gonna keep it with it for the most part. Um, I'm gonna put it down here. And I'm gonna leave those tubes in. Now, here's where we get into some of the meat and potatoes of this. Uh, mine is already coming apart. Uh, so this whole front section, for me, wants to come off right now. Um, these little pieces right here, they will come out. Um, or at least we had to hook them in before. Um, but, I'm gonna go ahead now and disconnect this the rest of the way. So they've added some screws, which weren't in the other Pip-Boy that I have. But, um, okay, so now I'm gonna slide this part off. This is where we see the wires that do and the wires that don't do anything. So these two wires right here, the blue and the red, those can come straight out. I'm gonna keep those. And then I have the wires that are this green one right here. This one also doesn't do anything. And it's the these wires right here that came with the first one. So they, they didn't really serve a purpose. They don't do anything. It's just to keep them realistic to the game as far as their look goes. They're purely cosmetic. But, these wires, on the other hand, this goes from my screen over to the candles, uh, which is that module that we just, you know, disconnected. And, uh, and as you can see here, these little clips pop off. Um, and so they slide, I should say they slide out of this once when we've disconnected it from here. So what I'm gonna focus on next, surprisingly, as you might, you might think, uh, is I wanna take this Hollow tape deck off, which only means all I have to do is clip it off this side, clip it off the other side, and the whole thing will come off of there. Uh, then down here, you'll see that it wraps around, it's connected to this. And so for right at the moment, we're gonna disconnect that. And to do that, we're gonna pinch on these two buttons, this one here and this one here, and I'm just gonna pull it apart like that. Now, I'm also gonna pull out Pull off this piece right here. I'm gonna put it over there for a minute. Now, we're getting closer to me figuring out how in the world they connected these things through this plastic. So the faceplate wants to come off, but these wires are holding it to it. These wires are going through here, connecting into here. Um, so I'd say the next part that I have to check out is this piece, which is originally, the only thing I could see was the purpose for sending this screwdriver. And four, and I'm gonna try and keep those screws together with these parts. I am guessing, yeah, okay. So now we're finally to our main workings, right? I'm gonna be unscrewing this screw here like so. I'm also going to be unscrewing this screw right here. Okay, perfect. So it's looking to me like they did solder these post. Um, the side that I think I'm going to, the way that I'm going to do it, the way I'm going to do it, is I could totally see resoldering these. That would not be a problem. Um, and I think that that's the way I would choose to do it. Getting a nice picture here. You've got black on top, blue, then yellow, then red. Um, and I am not gonna cut it right at the board. So I think I'm gonna desolder those. But I am gonna cut it pretty close. All right. And that's what's gonna help me to disconnect that from there. 
and slide this through there, just like that. And now, this is where things also kind of get fun. So, so I've also got two wires here. Um, and it looks like they have quite a, kind of a questionable area to solder. So I'm gonna actually cut this a little bit high so I can always just reconnect the wires separately. Right about here. And it's too bad because I really like this screen. I love the way that it lit up. I love the backlight, how dark it is. Like right now you cannot see it all inside of there. You cannot see that, uh, you can't see anything that's, that shines on the inside. Um, the sticker itself, which is impressive. I like that. And so it's only when it turns on that you actually see it. That's so much more realistic in world. Uh, but since I can't, I'm not planning on using this, unfortunately. Um, oh, gotta love that. Once again, you use Rob coat where you wouldn't have noticed, you wouldn't find it anyways, unless you did what we're doing right now. And take that off. So, this is what's on the inside. That's what the light is shining uh, through on this back reflective piece right here. This is this is what's getting lit up by five LEDs that are at the bottom down here. And now I can just pull these wires through, which means that in here I can also pull this through like that. And I will need to hold on to these little pieces right here because they go on my arm. This one's, I think, the same as my other one. Uh, but what you didn't know is I had to do some modifications also on the screen part. But for right now, we, these clip out. So I can clip, clip, like this, clip it in. Like that, I clip that one in, and it just slides out like that. So I got those two parts separate. This is the part that I mentioned earlier, um, honestly. I didn't like the way that this connects. It's plastic pieces that are inside the cuff, and um, it just, it meant that I'd have to, I couldn't take it off and put it back on, although I haven't really had to do that much with my back piece anyways. Uh, but nonetheless, I also I never popped mine in, so getting these out, and there we go, and then finally this one right here. Now I'm not sure if I'm even going to be keeping the back plate because the modification I had to do last time was kind of significant and I think I might actually 3D print a part and provide you with the model to be able to make that work. So there's the clips that were inside there. I don't really think we need them anymore so I'm going to get rid of mine. In case you were wondering for the purpose of painting, I am going to remove this sticker, which I am so glad that this is a sticker. Look at that. It comes off real easy. So that means I can... I was worried it was painted on or screen printed on, which would have made this slightly harder to do. So no longer is it representing sugar bombs. Um, and then these two screws right here, if you're going to be painting it, yes, you need to take them out. Uh, this part right here, these pop off on the back. As you can see right here, this one's showing. So you see that there's that clip right there? We need to clip it on both sides technically to get through whoop, that part. And then you'll see that we, we have this, these two pieces, the spring and this, which I really don't need anymore uh, for what I'm doing. And then over here on this side, uh, I've got this little bezel that pops off like that. And that's actually the most important part to keep is this bezel. So if nothing else this is the part I want still. Be patient as you uh, work with this part. I want it lifted enough that I can get the blade farther underneath here. If you listen, you can hear the sticker coming off. There we go, look at that. And I've still got actually plenty of stickiness. That will stick right back on, no problem. I just need a backing to put on it, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some uh, backing on that. There you go. And this is gonna be pretty important. It's really important that uh, we are able to remove both sides of this module. You notice that on the radio it didn't have two 
removable sides. It only has one. Part of that has to do with the fact that they originally had plans on how they wanted to try and uh, make the Geiger counter module. Um, and so because of that, They needed this second side, and we're using it in very much the same way that they plan to use it. Uh, this is what I'm going to be attaching my meter to. So, so this is important. So we're able to take this part off. Another piece that we want to look at. This part comes right off once when this is detached, uh, which allows me to pull these pieces apart. This time, I am not going to repaint these plastic pieces that are supposed to be metal pieces. Uh, last time, I made them look more metal. Uh, I don't think there's a need for that. Um, so. And I don't quite frankly want to have to take them apart again. They are a pain in the butt <laughs> to take this apart and put it back together. If I had to pick one part, this is the hardest part to put apart, take apart and put back together. This is it. So if you have a functional one, uh, I kind of just recommend keeping it the way it is. There is a specific way to take this apart without having it uh, shoot apart. Like literally there are parts that will shoot out uh, and you will lose if you take this apart wrong. But at the same time, um, I will say that it is a little bit complex and to be really careful. So if you're not sure if you want to do this part, um, then I would say leave it alone uh, because it will be difficult to do. But in taking this part, I did see it's just slightly different. Um, just a little bit different looking than my other one. Um, and so if you look at the interior here, for the most part though, it's still the same process. Uh, so I took a screw off on the bottom and then what we're doing when we get inside of here, this part pretty much looks the same. This is actually the area where I also hid the magnets. And uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna take these parts, as I pull this down, I'm gonna take these two little sliders off of here and I'm just gonna put those off to the side for a minute. Um, it's okay, they're exactly the same, so we don't keep need to keep track of which one was on which side. But that takes apart that center piece. The next part I'm gonna be doing is taking apart these screws right here. So I'm just gonna take out the four screws and then once when all those screws are unscrewed, I'm gonna flip this over, okay? Just like this. Let the screws fall out to the bottom. Hopefully, hopefully we unscrewed them all enough. Yeah, that we can just take them all out. Now, yep, so those are all out. With it laying down like this now, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be holding in on the buttons. There's two buttons that you typically hold on to eject the pit boy that are here and here. Holding in on those so that the, so the inside pieces don't shoot out. And as I do that, I'm gonna lift this piece off of here. Okay. Just like so. And you'll see that in here, I've got these two springs. That's what I was watching out for. Um, and so now I've got this piece separate. Now, a big piece that's hard is keeping these straight. Um, we'll be able to figure it out later. I'm not too worried about that. So we can take these parts out now. We're just gonna lift them straight up. Um, if you watch my other video, I'll show you how to put this all back together as well. So I'm not worrying about it too much. Putting those parts in with my screws. And then this front plate right here pops right off. Um, this is actually a part I'm giving you a model to be able to 3D print that will fit this that have these has these windows missing. And so that way you can put rollers in or you can make it backlit the way I did in the Pip-Boy 3 video. Next, I'm gonna be popping this off. I also need to get this off. Um, so I'm gonna just push in on one of these tabs right here carefully so that I don't lose my spring here. So, and there's a spring, which has sprung already. I'm gonna lift that out along with my red button. And then I'm gonna take this right here and pop that through. I'm trying to think if that's gonna be the color. I'm trying to decide whether or not I wanna make this white or I'll leave it black. Um, Cause I kinda liked the black last time. I'm still thinking it through. Uh, we'll see, but at any rate, and then uh, I possibly could keep this white, actually, if I do that. And then, 
Now, I'm gonna bring this piece over here. This part just kind of lifts off of here, just like this, just like that. Um, and then, these are the buttons that we pushed on and on to make that eject. I'm gonna put that in my bag for later. Also, you might wanna pull these springs out. Uh, it's up to you. Um, I think I will because I'm gonna be painting this. Um, and they will, by the way, pull out. Uh, so they just need to be slid a little bit using a knife or something. And uh, then you can slide them in the same way later on. So, anyway. And just like that, my holotape section is now undone as well. So, so far, we've got our holotape section that I've done. We've got the top section that we did. We've got this screen area, the screen module. We've got the uh, Geiger counter module. And then we've got the radio module. And we've got this, uh, the, the uh, cuff piece. Um, I've got some of my additional pieces actually here that need to go into the radio module section. And then I've got the backlit piece just in case we ever want to use it again. And then my holotape section. That's what I have so far organized into bags. So I'm moving all that out of the way for a moment. Uh, and now we're gonna visit the last piece, the uh, radio module. Um, I thought about just covering this when we make a radio, but uh, at the same time, I need to know how to disassemble this in order to paint the end piece. And so for that part, point, for that purpose, I'm gonna go ahead and take this part. Also doing a little bit of an unboxing here. So, as you can see, first off, I loved this unboxing when I did it the first time. This is actually part of what comes with that tool that I showed you earlier. Um, it also came in our original kit, but it comes in here as well for taking off that button of the current Pip-Boy that you own, so you can stick this one in. And uh, it comes with instructions on how to assemble it, so I have done this before. And then this is where it gets cool. They can't just package it. You know, they gotta use in-world stuff. This is where you don't wanna throw away your paper. You wanna keep this nice. I actually have it framed upstairs of this very same thing. Um, it is a actual article, real world, or sorry, in-game world. Um, this one's a little bit more crinkled than my other one, but now I can actually, I could use both sides. So, um, you know, they actually have full articles here. The Boston Bugle, here's the White House remains empty. Where's our president? Uh, you got some actual ads here. Um, you got, uh, here's the Barfly ad down here. Um, the gasoline ad. And then on the back, you got the Chrysalis ad, uh, which it comes from, this is actually artwork that they had done, especially for them, uh, in relation to the cars that they released, uh, which I have as well. Um, oh, look, here's our tool that we just barely used. Now I've got two of them. Yeah, see these smaller ones are just clippings of the same cage, but they're only pieces of it. Here's the bottom piece that we need. I don't know, because the current one that we have, I think, is this. Uh, that has a section for the underlying. But just in case, uh, we got that now too. You've got this piece right here as a backup uh, because it has the holes in it and stuff um, ready to stick that into it. That looks like the holes are in two, a completely different spot than the other ones. Um, am I wrong about that? I'll have to check it out. Um, okay. And then, oh yeah, this is, this is a good thing. I forgot, of course. Got that, but an actual screen, because the other one, remember it? It was all sealed off, it was a single piece. Ooh, it's so small. Oh, these are our alternate springs. Yeah, I mean, I guess now I got backups. So those are the springs that go inside of our, so the candle lighting. And now, the best part. I'm gonna keep these so nice. Um, I think I'm gonna use this to replace, because this looks, yeah, this looks in better condition than my ones that I've been using behind me for all these years. Uh, and I say all these years because it's been a few years. Uh, 2019 is when I did that. So four years now that uh, 
that we originally did this Pip-Boy project. And now I'm gonna slide this off here. Uh, and so something that uh, you might remember us being told by Chris was that it, it, they barely had enough room for those AAA batteries. And so they actually, on this side, you have the PCB is literally, uh, that makes a connection with that is literally uh, right there. Um, the question that we have, the whole purpose of us taking this out right now is, can I take off just this end to be able to repaint it? looking like maybe I shouldn't maybe I shouldn't pop it off so I'm gonna just have to do my very best to get that painted really well underneath that edge because uh, I do not want to try to take this part I am aware also that this runs all the way through and it's connected to a hollow sensor um, so so yeah this actually what it's doing is it's turning that piece and that rod has a magnet on it that when it passes the hollow sensor, it tells it basically that it is moving and then switches it to the Fallout Universe radio. Hold this down, just like that. Ooh, look at that, see? Nice glow in all areas. And then, like I said, here in the US, I can actually pick up radio pretty good. So if I push on this, I should be able to get, see there's a station, I'm gonna turn away from it as quickly as I can. Two, there we go. And now we're into the Fallout universe. <laughs> if I find another station, right? And then uh, I can change the channel again. And there we go. If you want to launch nukes, you'll need to start by recovering launch code fragments from scorched or feral ghoul officers. This message repeats. Although technically it doesn't really. really Heat, but it does it plays several different fallout. This is an important broadcast. The Watoga City robots have gone berserk and there is a significant threat to human life. Isn't that cool? Life, stay clear of Watoga area. And I hold down on it, it'll make it go louder, or quieter. And then if I double click it, it turns off. So Something I haven't shared with you yet is I said that there's ways to still get this. These are going right now where I am, go on eBay for $350. Originally they were like $35, $40, I can't remember, somewhere in that range. Let's say they were even $60, I, I could see like $60. And most of these have a make an offer uh, button on them. And so that's what I did is I just went into them and I made offers. So I like literally just wrote them and said, hey, you know that this typically went for 35 bucks. It doesn't come with anything else. I mean, you know, you're asking a lot of money. You're probably not gonna be able to sell for this month. I don't remember exactly what I wrote, but basically I just said, you know, would you, would you be willing to take what it's technically worth? And I had only written that technically it had originally been for $35. I wasn't saying I, I wanted to pay that much, although I would like to pay that much. And they wrote me back and they said, yeah, I'll take 35. <laughs> so, so there you go. So don't get discouraged with these prices that you see out there on the web. Um, the same thing we're going to talk about with the BlackBerry, which is coming up with some of these uh, these upcoming couple of uh, stages, is that uh, when you go to purchase them, honestly, uh, the BlackBerry is so easy to get right now for so cheap because of a couple things. One, several of them have broken screens, which doesn't matter for us. Or uh, they are they're stuck on that on that Wi-Fi screen, and they don't know what to do beyond that. And because of that, we have the opportunity to snatch them off for next to nothing because they think that they don't work, but technically they do work. And there's a great workaround which I have a video for, and uh, that you're going to be able to to unlock those very easily. So this is step two. We're done with step two. We we have just done quite a bit actually. Uh, that took. A lot longer than I was kind of expecting. I will say, I mean, as you can see right here, uh, aside from my Pip Boy, I mean, I have enough parts to maybe make a couple of other ones. Um, also, on eBay, every time I look, uh, whenever I see that somebody's selling one of these um, or just parts and it says it's for parts, I will buy it uh, and usually for pretty cheap. So that gives me some kind of backup parts to work with. So I've taken this thing apart and put it together a million times. And, and because of that, I can say that today's Pip-Boy that we did is slightly different 
than the one that I did originally. And so if you're working with one of the original kits and you're wondering why some of the additional steps that we had to do and some of the things that we did, that is specific. What we did today is specific to those special edition Pip Boys and, and I think the second release, the one that was pre-assembled. But uh, if you happen to have the original one, uh, actually it's gonna be much easier, but for the most part you can follow the same steps that we did today. Next time we're gonna be talking about how to prep it further to get it painted, as well as steps for preparing and taking apart the blackberries. In the meantime, like, subscribe, comment below. This was your Geek Fix.